government is the most dangerous threat to man's rights. It holds a legal monopoly on the use of physical force against legally disarmed victims. But government is not reason, it is not eloquence, it is force. Like fire, a troublesome servant and a fearful master. The state represents violence in a concentrated and organised form. The individual has a soul, but as the state is a soulless machine, it can never be weaned from violence to which it owes its very existence." End quote. In Britain, there is no legal entity called the state in which powers are vested or to which allegiance or other duties are owed. The boundaries of the criminal law are explicable largely as the results of exercises of political power. The main determinants of criminali criminalisation continue to be political opportunism and power. The most potent challenge to the continuing status of parliamentary sovereignty comes not from legislation from Parliament but from the common law. I do not think that literal compulsion to answer questions from an official, by torture for instance, would be within the lawful powers of Parliament. Some common law rights presumably lie so deep that even Parliament could not override them. I myself would consider there were advantages in making it clear that ultimately there are even limits on the supremacy of Parliament, which is which it is the court's inalienable responsibility to identify and uphold. To be sovereign, one must take full responsibility over his or her life and actions as the kings of old would have taken over their kingdoms. But the fraudulent nature of the current system seems to be nearing the end of its run. What comes next will be determined by what we put our energy into. Will we continue feeding an out-of-date machine that is only holding us back from reaching our true potential? Or will we finally claim the sovereignty that we all inherently have and truly become autonomous? The choice, dear reader, is entirely yours. Thank you.